Hi, welcome back to Cuddly Kaya. Today we're going to talk about closing the rule book for dogs. Kaya, just watching her, she's given me some excellent ideas of things to share with you that I guess I've known all along, but it just became more apparent to me here recently as I watched what she was doing when we were together. Are we boring you? All dog owners, especially new dog owners, are bombarded with things to do as a new dog owner. They must get this. They must watch that. <laughs> Maybe it's her nap time. <laughs> they must get this. They must watch that. They must read this book. They must have that something else. And it, the list just goes on and on and on. By the time you are finished listening to all the advice, all your friends and people you don't even know are giving you, you're about ready to just turn around and hand the dog back to wherever you got it. I hope to be a place of encouragement and relief to get through all those rules. And please allow me to become your dog's advocate and play the part of your dog. Stella, I love you too. Because I always think it's best to consider both sides of the story. So forget what you've heard and let's detour down another path from the perspective of a dog. And let's see what we can find. If you live in a highly populated area where there are lots of people and other dogs and children and elderly people and you just can't let them off your leash, then I would say, yes, you must obey that rule. But if you can get away with taking them to an open space or a path that you enjoy where you're not disobeying signage, you're not interrupting anyone else's happiness, maybe you're just there alone, which is how I like it to be, let your dog off the leash and just watch them. Dogs love walks because it's their time. At least that's how they look at it. They're free, finally, to explore the world, to smell and run and play. New dog owners are bombarded with this as well. Take your dog to dog training. Teach them how to heal and trot along beside you, never stopping with her head held high. Well, that's great if you're showing your dog. And that's good if you are really needing to get somewhere and you're in a crowd. Of course you want your dog to act that way. And you should train them to do that. But your dog on a walk is thinking something entirely different. So let's let them be dogs. Let's let them have their time, where they can run and smell and roll in the grass and step in the mud, wade in the lake, maybe even go for a little swim. Whatever it is they want to do, whatever it is they long to do, you are really doing your dog a disservice by constantly keeping them on a leash. <laughs> You'd think I'd worn her out before this, but she hasn't been anywhere. <laughs> In other words, let them wear themselves out with the freedom that you so freely give them as a gift. Maybe it's not viable to do this every day on your walk. Maybe you, you have other things planned, scheduled. But if you could do it at least once a week, your dog will love you forever for that.
you probably know this, dogs live in the moment. They are thinking about right now. They don't worry about what happened last hour or what's going to happen in the hour to come. They just enjoy every moment, especially on their walk. Their world isn't polluted with yesterday and tomorrow and all the things that could go wrong. Isn't that why we love being with our dogs? Because they are so fully attentive, loyal, and fully being with us. I discovered years ago, if I was tense, had a bad day at work, or whatever was going on, and I just grabbed a leash, tried to get all the problems of the day out of my mind, and took my dog to a, a pretty path, or at the time we had some land that I could walk the dog on, um, it just melted the stress away. I came back with real stress relief, feeling calm and renewed. And after that walk, I concentrated on enjoying every minute that evening. Every fun thing that happened, everything that made me smile, just like I watched my dog do. You know, if we all lived our life that way every day, it'd be so much more simple. But it's hard to do. We've got responsibilities. Dogs don't have a whole lot to do, let's face it. I agree. Sometimes a leash is required and just needed for safety. But how you walk your dog on a leash is very important. Walking a small dog on a leash with the tug and pull of the walk, kind of the tug of war, on with a leash with a leash clipped to their collar is harmful to a small dog's neck. It can give them all kinds of problems that they wouldn't have had otherwise. So years ago, after I became an adult and started thinking about these things, I found two um, solutions to that problem. One is a harness that I use. I got it for Kaya when she was just a baby, a puppy. And it snaps together with a buckle and Velcro. So it fits snugly, it's soft, and it's very comfortable for a dog. With that, you can teach them to walk on a leash without harming their neck with that tug and pull that always goes on when you're teaching a dog about a leash. And when I had a bigger dog, um, a, about a 35-pound Border Collie, he was, he was the sweetest dog, but when he went for a walk, he kind of went a little crazy at first, probably for the first 30 minutes of it, because Border Collies have a lot of energy if you've never had one. So I would come back from the walk tired, and my shoulder would be hurting. And I found something called a gentle leader that is very helpful in this situation. It goes over their nose. It's a collar, but it has a piece that goes over their nose. And when they start tugging, it pulls back on their nose and it slows them down and they stop pulling immediately. Before I found the gentle leader, I wasn't too excited about going on a walk with my border collie the next day because my shoulder was killing me honestly <laughs> and my arm we love as humans to sit down to a well-prepared meal that's seasoned and hot and has been expertly and lovingly made for us the taste of steak and carrots buttery mashed potatoes and rolls, hot rolls. Oh, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> of course you want to share that with man's best friend, your little furry puppy. That mine, <laughs> mine keeps acting like she's passing out. <laughs> Do you grimace when your dog drinks out of the toilet? Why? Your dog is confused again. He's gone to that bowl several times today, 
and each and every time it's been dry. No water. I try to make it a morning routine where I get up and rinse the dog's dishes out, get them clean, fill the bowl with fresh water and tantalizing food that I know Kaya will just want to eat immediately. But then something happens and interrupts my train of thought, maybe something I didn't anticipate, and I go off on another rabbit trail and never give it another thought before I get the water bowl filled. What's the poor dog to do? Well, they decide to take care of themselves, just like a natural dog does, and they get water where they can find it. So the solution, if you haven't already thought of it, is quick and easy for this one. You just get one of those self-watering containers and fill it once a week. Surely we can manage to do that, can't we? I know, week old water isn't considered fresh water to us, but it sure beats that muddy puddle your dog drank out of in the backyard yesterday that was full of whatever fertilizer you're spreading all over your grass to make it golf green, isn't it? This is awkward. I find myself agreeing with this rule. I'm telling you to break. But the word contribute gets me out of this corner I've talked myself into. My goodness, I don't contribute to my dog's separation anxiety. No, that either happens or it doesn't. Most days I'm with Kaya all day long. I work on my YouTube videos and blogs and marketing on my channel and because she was a puppy and still is only 10 months I couldn't really trust her with potty training very well so I would take her everywhere I went in every room I was in she would either be sitting with me near the chair or she would be sitting on the couch with me or she would be in a corner where her toys were and I could keep a good eye on her and she never got very far away for month after month after month. And that practice did avoid a lot of potty accidents. And then she didn't like to be left alone at home. So I would take her with me in the car if I was going through a drive through or Lowe's or Home Depot or PetSmart where she could come in with me. I guess she was with me all the time. So how could she get separation anxiety? I can truthfully say I did contribute to her not getting separation anxiety as well. Kaya doesn't have the run of the house when I leave. I usually put her in the laundry room with a baby gate to keep her in there because I couldn't risk her being alone unsupervised. I mean, she's a very smart and creative puppy and no telling what I would come home to. So I left her in the laundry room, also with her bed, and a few of her favorite toys. But the most important item I leave her with is a Kong toy, like this one that I just pulled out of the freezer. It's filled with kibble now. Usually I mix kibble with water and then stuff it in the Kong, or I mix it with peanut butter and stuff it in the Kong. That's what this one has in it, peanut butter and kibble. And then I put them in the freezer. So when I leave, I leave one of these with her as well. It takes it a while to thaw and it's, it's pretty well packed in there. And I do more and I always have one ready for the next time. And by the time I come home, her little belly is full and satisfied and she's usually asleep. Oh my, I had quite an unsettled time with this one. But I did a video not long ago about how I stopped Kaya from barking at everything that moved and everything that caught her attention. I did find a solution though, after lots of research, 
and I'll leave that video on the end screen where you can click it and see what I did and I'm telling you it worked it worked I will go down in history saying it worked if you do what I did and you can have success too which I know you will write a comment below this video and let me know your success story I'd love to hear it and put it on my website for other people to see and Facebook write a comment Do I agree with this rule? Mm, yes and no. I'm at the airport a lot because we travel a lot. And I have this cute little carrier that I put Kaya in and roll her along beside me just like any other bag. And it's quite unique. And a lot of people stop and ask me about that bag and where I got it and how much it costs and all kinds of details. It's the kind that you can put under the seat in front of you when you're traveling. And it's pretty comfortable for your dog. In fact, Kaya likes it a lot now because she's identified it as her safe place. So, when people at the airport approach me and want to pet Kaya because they see a cute little puppy in a bag and they want to reach in and interact with her, that's where I draw the line because even I have rules that I keep. That's my first condition with socializing a little dog. That if they're in their safe place, whatever that is, under the table, in their bed, in their carrier, in your lap, wherever they feel safe and you know that's where they go when, when maybe they're upset about their surroundings, that's when I draw the line. No one socializes with her at that point. Not even little kids that are so cute and they just want to pet her. I just have to tell them no, but I always explain why. Because the airport is loud and busy and kind of a scary place for a little dog. All that hustle and bustling around, I'd probably be scared too. My second rule about socializing your dog with other people is just as personal to your dog as it is to the other person that's involved. So many people believe that socializing your dog means handing your puppy off to anyone and everyone that shows interest. Good grief. Give it a little more thought. Your little puppy has been whisked away from their canine mom and all their siblings and out of anything that's familiar to them. Their eyes get so big when you hand them off. They look at the person that's holding them and they look all around because they're looking for you. Have you ever seen a little puppy's face when you hand them off to your friend who's never seen the dog and the dog's certainly never seen her? I mean, you are the security that they trust. I do agree. Puppies need to be socialized. But I feel like it shouldn't really happen to a large degree before they're six months old. This is just my opinion. And I think it should be on their own terms. Dogs have kind of a sixth sense about the type of persons they're around. They know if somebody likes dogs. They know if somebody's scared of dogs. Um, they, they just know. They, they have a lot more knowledge than we credit them for. I believe there ought to be a warning associated with this rule, one that's directed to the new dog owner. That kind of gives them some idea of what they've gotten themselves into. Potty training isn't easy. It might start out easy, and you might think you've got it licked, and then you find out you don't. If you don't pick a process for potty training that you stick to and you do your part, and no matter how tired you are during the potty training sessions, you still stick to your part, and that helps a lot. It's best to be at home during the potty training time all day, every day, for at least two weeks, sticking to the rules of the potty training. And afterwards, you need to arrange to have someone come 
and let your dog out two or three times a day while you're at work. They say a dog, say three months old, can hold their waist for four hours. So it's their age in months plus one. So if they're five months old, they can hold it maybe six hours. Your dog and you form your own little language about this. They have some way that you recognize that they're telling you they need to relieve themselves. In Kaya's case, we used bells on the door. There is a tendency for your dog to get confused during potty training. For instance, we train or I trained Kaya on bells hanging on a strap on our sliding glass door. So I started a little bit at a time. I got her to go up and ring the bell. As soon as she did that, I praised her and praised her and gave her a treat and hugged her and kissed her and made such a big deal out of it that it didn't take long at all that she understood ringing that bell got a treat. So what did she do? She sat by the door and rang the bell every five minutes and stood there expecting me to give her another treat, which I did because I wanted to follow the process. And that was the correct thing to do. But I added to my process. Once she had that down, I didn't give her the treat until I then opened the door. So she would go up, ring the bell, look for her treat, and I would wait and open the door and show her what happened when she rang the bell, and then I would give her her treat. Well, the look on her face told me that she got that message. So then she began pawing the bell every time she wanted a treat and go outside. So she would go outside, I would follow the rules and get up and do it, and she would go outside and smell the pavers or get a drink out of the bowl from outside rather than inside, which wasn't exactly the point, but she was getting the idea. Okay, I was being played by a puppy. So what does that say about me? <sighs> Never mind. So then I added another strategy. When Kaya would go to the door and ring the bell, I would get up and open the door and she would go outside and I would then insist that she try to go potty or poop on her grass pad. That took a while, but as soon as she did it, oh, you'd have thought she had hung the moon. I practically danced and got so excited for her that she peed or pooped. I gave her treats. I hugged her. I picked her up. We went through the whole process every single time. The neighbors were probably getting quite the entertainment from our house. Well, that covers my opinion on the rules that I think you should close the book on. Every dog's different. Every family's different. But these are tips that can really help you if you're a new dog owner or if you it's been a while since you've had a puppy. That's the situation I found myself in. So, if you have any questions, or you just want to email somebody that's been there, I'd be happy to talk with you. I've also left a link in the description below the video where you can go and browse through my shop that has everything I've talked about that I use and recommend. And consider sharing this video with someone you know that could use it. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.